This is a Formula One car. This is a touring car. Very different, aren't they? One is a state-of-the-art bespoke racing machine designed for speed and power, using all the aero trickery in the rulebook to get around a track in the fastest time possible. The other is based off a family hatchback that is designed to be run around club level tracks in three 25 minute races. Well, 25 minutes there or thereabouts. The point I'm trying to make here is that they're not the same, so the same rules can't really be applied, if that makes any sense. The reason I say this is because the latest gimmick coming out of the F1 Bright Ideas office is to try and regulate the speed of a Formula 1 car using active aero in some sort of GT3 slash touring car BOP nonsense thing. Alright, BOP is a GT3 or endurance racing thing, while in touring car racing you're probably going to hear the word parity a lot more. BOP is taking the individual performances of each individual car and then tweaking them slightly to make sure they're on as equal a playing field as possible. They can knock off a few horses from this car or allow a bigger air intake on that car so it has more power, or they can make the rear wing smaller so it produces less rear end grip or add some more drag to slow it down in a straight line, or add weight or reduce the turbo pressure. It means that you get loads of really cool supercar shapes on track, each with their own little quirks and engines and things like that. So if Mercedes wants to run a V8, it can run a V8. If Porsche wants a flat 6, it can run a flat 6. If Lambo wants a V10, it can run a V10. It also means that the cars will behave differently at different tracks. Adding weight will affect all-round performance, while the turbo being down will affect corner exit, for instance. If a car is able to exit a corner at warp 9, they'll do something to slow that acceleration down. If it's doing 190 miles an hour in a straight line, they might add more drag, and it's a very complicated procedure that takes a lot of time to sort out. Now, parity, on the other hand, is making sure the cars are all as equal as possible right out of the box. This is things like all cars using the same tyres, all cars using the same suspension parts, same gearboxes, same engines, all producing the same amount of drag and downforce before they've even hit the track. In this case, you'll have cars that are, for all intents and purposes, the same but on the outside they look like a Mustang, a Camaro, a Civic, or a 330i, or whatever. Now Ross Braun, who is set to retire from Formula 1 at the end of the year, has suggested that active aero might be the future to try and bring the field closer together, which, well, it baffles me in all honesty. I mean, we already have active aero. It's called DRS and you can use it at certain points on the track in certain conditions. In this modern world of sophisticated aero and dirty air, and it has to be said here that dirty air is a term that's been in use since the mid 90s, DRS is a necessary evil. The only issue is that in more cases than not, it results in a slam dunk overtake that isn't exactly fun to watch. And sometimes the thrill of the chase is just as good as the satisfaction of the overtake. Look at Bottas vs Vettel at Sochi in 2017 for instance. Now Braun said it's still got to be sorted to see how that can be done and if it can be done safely and predictably. But active aerodynamics, we semi have them at the moment with DRS and DRS is active aerodynamics. But can you do something much more significant? If you have active aerodynamics then of course you could affect the car in front. You could have a proximity that once you get within a certain degree the car in front loses a little bit of downforce and you gain a little bit of downforce. There's tricks you can play with that, it becomes an opportunity. So is Braun suggesting that all of this will be modified from the sidelines mid-race? They might decide the leader has got too much of a gap so they'll electronically alter his wing settings from race control to give him less downforce and therefore scupper coring ability so that the people behind can catch up. It makes absolutely no sense. What you end up with is artificial rubber banding. So what happens when the leader has lost his lead? Do they reset the wings again or do they just leave them as they are for a little bit longer? What happens if the car behind then gets ahead? Do they fiddle with his wing settings or I don't I don't get this at all. This is starting to sound a lot like using console commands during a game of Stellaris or Football Manager or something like that. Imagine it's the World Cup quarter final and I'm losing 2-1 to France. Yeah, this isn't a realistic case study at all. So I'm going to give Mbappe an injury, sub off Griezmann for some 16 year old who is only good enough for his Bekistani Division 4, and then alter all the stats of the England players to make them all as good as 2011 era Lionel Messi. Boom, won the game 6-2. And from a driving standpoint, it's going to frustrate the drivers a lot. The whole point of Formula 1 is to build the fastest car possible and then put the fastest guy available in that fastest car. 
It's why Schumacher, Verstappen, Hamilton and Senna all had the success they had. Yes, they've won in not the fastest car, but as soon as they're given a great car, dominance. So the driver is going to be running 15 seconds ahead of the pack because the team has done a better job and then being told, oh, sorry, Max, FIA's taken three clicks of front and rear wing off, so you're going to be slow in turns 4, 10 and 15. And then some team radio to the effect of unbelievable mate, grr, etc. And if anything, it sounds a little bit dangerous, especially if they haven't told the driver that this has happened or told the team this has happened. Driver then tries to lob it into Sandevoet like he has done in the previous five laps because force of habit only to find that the downforce is gone, it's a one-way trip into a wall. It's race fixing without the race fixing, if that makes any sense. In the BTCC, they used to use success ballast for all three races because that A, kept all the cars close together because the BTCC is all about close racing, and B, when it comes to reverse grids, it's about the driver coming through the field to get a great result. It puts it more in the hands of the driver rather than the car. Nowadays, they restrict the amount of push to pass a driver can use during a race, which has had mixed results, and some people don't like either system. Why should the better drivers be held back, socialist racing, and so on. It appears that once again, Formula 1 is back in that entertainment versus sport thing again, which is something I've mentioned quite a bit before, particularly through last season. With Formula 1 now behind a paywall and costing more and more and more year on year for the privilege, they feel they need to give people their money's worth. But at the same time, you don't see FIFA changing the size of goals in football, which is also behind a paywall, so it's easier for players to score 30-yard worldies every single game, and you have about 997 goal of the season contenders because there's so many of them. Now, Braun did say, I'm not saying we would do that, but it becomes an opportunity. Now, any naive person will go, oh, they're just thinking about it. It, it, it might come to nothing, but... Anybody that's been around for more than two years will be going, this translates to we have every intention of bringing this in because f you, that's why. Like I said, it's sport versus entertainment. Snooker has been experimenting with shot clocks in some tournaments to make it faster. Table tennis made it first to 11, not first to 21 to make it TV friendly. And leagues such as the NHL and rugby have salary caps to stop the richer clubs buying up all the best players on huge salary packets that no one else can better. Football now has financial fair play, which... Yeah, that's not being policed at all, is it? And just as an aside here, it does seem like most sports, so we're talking football, Formula 1, cricket, golf, tennis, and so on, are trying to cram as much into a season because more events means more TV time. Formula 1 is saying cut costs but do 24 races a season. Save the planet but fly from Baku to Canada in the space of a week. Use only three engines, but do 24 races plus however many sprints. Football players doing 70 plus games a season and so on. And yes, I know, 350 grand a week, but there's only so much the human body can take. And if you want the racing to be better, have you tried to work out a way of making the cars lighter and smaller while at the same time keeping them as safe as they've ever been? As one person in the comment section put it, if he was the boss of Audi, he'd be working on a turtle shell ejector system because... That's the way it looks like it's all going. So then, a look at the latest edition of WWF1. Ironically, a year to the day after the FIA's last big brain moment. If you've enjoyed this video, then do give it a like. And for more stuff like this, get subscribed with the bell on so you never miss out on anything I do around here. I said thanks to the fine folk at Patreon for the support. And if you want to help out as I buy up images and things for these videos, there's a link in the description as well as links to Discord and my socials. Well, there's super thanks as well if you just want to give me a little tip. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a great day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.